Hello. Welcome to the messiest corner of Mark's messy garage. You see this red thing behind me? I'm going to just have five minutes talking about that because I've made some modifications to it and I believe that they're easy to do and would, would highly recommend these modifications to anybody who's got a press like this. Okay, shall I describe them to you? Let's get on with it. Okay, here we are, here's the press. 60 quid off eBay. I quickly developed a problem with this press and the problem was due to the ram, this, this part here, this carriage, moving like that and like that. And this part here, moving like that. In conjunction with the ram part, which was a thinner piece than that, welded up under there. And what happened was, this movement made the carriage tilt and the ram bent in the end. The ram bent. This caused a problem. You were trying to press something, as the load would come on, it would all give and the ram would go like that and whatever you were pressing was all going off to the side. It was not very good. Okay, so the way it was, on the end of here, it had two metal, it had a metal piece like that and one on that side that kind of came around here to guide it. But what you can see, there's a good quarter inch there, clearance, and the same there. And it was the same on the sides as well, it was not good at all. So I had just bought my milling machine, so I thought oh, I'll do a bit of drilling and tapping. So I cut these things off, the metal things off, and filed it flush, ground it flush. Drilled and tapped two holes in the, in the thing there, two on each end. And made these little angle iron brackets. And on each angle iron bracket are two ball bearings. One that runs on the, there and one that runs on there. And you can see the one there. And you can possibly just see the one down behind there. And there's the one that runs on the inside edge. And around the back there, you might see the other one. These are 8mm bolts. And these bearings have a 10mm bore. So there's adjustment on the bearings like that. And for, for this one that's down here and that one there, you know, you've got a little bit of leeway there as well. To be honest, it would probably be better, once you've established that everything's okay, to weld this solid. So that was the first round of mods. Now, when I first did this, this one and this one were opposite and sticking up the same as those there. So you had exactly the same there and there, sticking up, there and there, sticking up. But only yesterday I thought, mm, this might be an idea actually, to flip these round and have them sticking down instead. Just took them off, bolted them back on. To, to make um, a distance between this bearing and that bearing, to kind of steady it in that direction. There is a steadying element in that direction by the fact that the, the jack locates in this collar. And that was the other thing I did. I made a, it was very sloppy like that. So in conjunction with all this other sloppy stuff that was going on, you got this as well. So I made like a little top hat section in there to make that a tight fit. So that was the first um, modifications I did. But I still had to contend with this um, ram that had got bent. So basically I cut it off flush with this surface and I drilled and tapped up the middle of the um, remnants of the ram and I made this. Now this is removable. Hang on. This is removable. This was turned up just from a piece of old, um, very rusty old shaft. 
but you know inside any bit of rusty old metal there's always a nice bit in the middle so that was a bit of a turning exercise there and I can't uh, I can't remember but I think that's um, 16 mil thread because I know I've got 16 mil taps and dies so I drilled and tapped up there and I welded that I cut out that piece of half inch plate and welded that on as well so that was my first round of modifications to the press and that transformed it it's really good now really good usable machine there's a couple of other little things which are silly little things but I'll show you them anyway the first thing is just this I bought these dirt cheap you know from a, like it's a pound shop or something and I've got one on here and one on the engine stand and it's it you know they're good for just operating the uh, thing without having to take the handle out and put the handle on the second thing is that there was a problem with this and I'll show you I'll take this spring off apply the jack here I'm jacking out jacking away with it sorry if I'm shaking the camera a bit and then you you apply a load like you get the load on you really get it going like that that's a good load on there now and then so so you, you you're standing here there's the handle right can you see where this is leading so you undo this bang that's just knocked you on the head so <laughs> having done that a couple of times I thought okay I'll, I'll do nothing more than I'll I've just got a luggage strap up over this lump of wood on the roof there you know you could do something a bit more fancy than that and I've drilled a hole in the handle and uh, put a split pin in it and I then made the hole in the split pin bigger so that that fits in there so that when you jack it now Obviously, you, you, you're going to, you know, under, you're going to realise already what's going to happen. So you do that, the handles up, look, and you release it, and it stays up there, you know, within reason. So that was that. And the last thing that I did was to drill another hole and put another split pin in there, just to, just to um, retain the handle in there, because sometimes this spring would would tend to pull the handle out all very very simple little things that you can do to make it a better machine and now that gives a real good press on there nice and solid and you can generate a lot of force with this well 12 tons okay So there you go, it's a little bit cramped in here, but it's um, what I call my, it's like the dirty area because I've got my grinding, my grinding machines down here. The grind, the, my grinders and the big vice and the, these grinders. It's, it's where I, well, do my grinding and it saves all that mess going in the other part of the garage. So there you are, a very useful machine. It costs next to nothing and it was mediocre when it arrived but now it's really good and it cost next to nothing extra to make it from mediocre to really good I'll tell you what i did like about this it's got proper channel section steel it's not pressed steel folded you know so okay there you go but i think it was um around about 60 quid delivered from belgium and the funny thing was that uh, it came in two packages, you could hardly pick them up, but they, they must have got separated at some point because they ended up in two different vans, so 60 quid delivered. Obviously we all know where it was actually made, but that's not the point. It is a very useful bit of equipment. Thanks a lot then. We all like having 
decent tools, don't we, in the garage? And I'm just trying to show you that you can make a big improvement without spending hardly anything. Just a bit of time. Thanks a lot, then. Bye. Hello. This is my friend's pickup truck. It's a F1. There's my friend, Richard. Hello. <laughs> and this is, he's holding the dog because I'm filming. So I thought what I'd do is just show you this truck because every time I walk the dog I come, come by and Rich has always made a bit of progress. And unfortunately I've left, <laughs> I've left it a bit late because I've missed a lot of the progress. I need to just back up a bit because of the zoom on this camera. So there's there's the truck and he's had the cab all tilted up and he's painted all underneath the floor, he's welded there and he's just put all the inner fenders on and he's just assembling all this up now. Um, it's, it's um, what do they call it, a sympathetic restoration where basically you're mending what needs mending but leaving what's okay, sort of you know, a bit like the way I tend to do stuff. Um, he's got a lot of parts on order, so hopefully he should be able to continue. Um, he's cleaned all the cleaned and painted all the engine bay, all in there, and it's looking good, looking good. He's done some welding on the front cross member where the radiator support goes in, and he's done some welding down there. And on the other side, there's some at the back, but the, you know, it's looking very good. You can see this is like the original pressings here. It's looking good. And here's where it's, it, here's where it was all uh, fatigued on this side. So he's got a few issues to sort out. One of them being that this spring, we don't think that's the right one it's not the same as this one it might be that this one isn't the right one I don't know and you know he's got like worn pitman arm and stuff like that and he's ordered all the parts for the brakes but here it is so I thought what I'd do from time to time is just come past and have a little look see how it's going and then kind of you know just keep people updated he's done all the floor in the cab and he's welded up like a new bottom half for that um, transmission cover there and there's plenty to do but it is taking shape quite nicely so anyway that's Richard holding the dog while I'm filming and this is his F1 what year is it Rich? 50 yeah, it's a 1950 F1 so I'll keep you updated and next time I walk the dog we'll get another little bit of film. Okay, cheers then. Bye. I'm going to make some um, washers for my hubs, I'm going to make some special washers, I don't know what this metal is, it's what amateur machinists call mystery metal.
dimensions or sizes, I'm just kind of making up as I go along. That's just over an inch deep at the moment. I'll go about an inch and a half. There's an inch and a half mark, just come up. So that's an inch and a half now. I find it easier machining in. Uh, decimal inches, I do. Okay, good. I'm experimenting with a camera mount on the tail stock. Okay. I've, I've skimmed the diameter and I've faced the end. I'm going to drill it out to five eighths. I think that might be all the way in. Yeah. I need it to be just slightly oversized on 5 eighths. I might leave it at that for now and just see how it goes. I can always just kind of take a tickle out of it later. These are the nuts I'm going to use. And what I want to do is make it so that it fits inside there, goes up. So I want a little counterbore on the end there. That diameter is 900 thou. Just kind of getting a depth setting for the boring tool. I'm not sure that boring tool will go up there actually. I think it's rubbing on the end. I think it needs. To, I'm gonna have to run it a little bit high. Once it starts opening the hole out, it'll be all right. I think. Is that deep enough? A little bit more. Taking twenty thousand each cut. Point seven seven eight. Do I dare just go for it now? Let's measure it again. Eight sixty, so yeah, I mean we're there, aren't we? We're, you know, we're forty thou off, and I'm taking twenty thou cuts, you know, per side. So I'm just going to go bang on, I think, because it won't hurt if it's 
No, I just want it to be slightly loose, so I'll go. I'll go 20 plus 1. Yeah, good. That's all right. Cool, man. Okay. Do we want to go a bit deeper? No, I don't think so. That's all right. So what I want to do is actually put a, a, a nice taper on this side here. I think I'm going to have to swing the um, top slide round to do that. Okay, you're on the business end there, aren't you? Let's. Uh Go about 500, let's see. Okay. Okay, so now the question is, how thick do I want it? I can go thicker than the standard washer. Bear in mind that's countersunk in there. Okay, I've got a new part in off tool, so I want to try that. I don't think it's very well supported when it's like this. I just broke the tool. Wow. Well, that's moved over a mile. I don't think it's very well supported when it's in this 45 in this angled position here because it's there's a big lot of overhang here. Mm, yeah, okay. It didn't like that, did it? I'll have to think of something else for next for the next one, for the next one. Okay, let's put that in there. I'm just going to try this roller method, the John Mills roller, the Geordie lad. Let's put that there like that, kind of. Feel it in. I won't tighten it, I'll just nip it gently. Turn it quite fast. You're not looking at the best angle really from there, but if I'm looking from here, you 
can see it running out. It's running through. That's all right. Let's put that in. Probably best. Gonna see if it fits on the axle then. I'm gonna make sure it's not too thick, you know, so that the um, the locking part goes on okay. I don't use um, castellated nuts. These are, I'll show you one close up. These are uh, Philidas aircraft deformed thread locking nuts. Okay. Okay, yeah, it's on. It's on. about as hard as I can press it on that bar there and that's that's about a 30 inch bar I think or 28 inch bar or something like that I don't stand on it but I you know press it quite well so there we are that's my idea that's how I'm going to do it have a beefed up washer and it's like a decent shape you know that channels the force into the hub so it'll be interesting to see how that stands up I think it looks quite nice actually it looks good can make another one now there's the old washer you can see how quite badly dished it is Can you see that? And there's the nut. This is this nut's been on and off probably about a dozen times. But I've just put a fresh one on there. I've just ordered some new ones as well. So that's the washer I've replaced with that there. And I think you'll agree it's you know a much more substantial looking thing. Okay.
That's it then. Excuse the uh, lockdown hair. <laughs> I haven't had my hair cut for ages. But that's it. A simple little job. Um, Shama broke that tool, but I think there's another end on the other end, but it was deflecting too much, wasn't it? I think my spindle bearings might need adjusting as well, because I can see the spindle lifting. But anyway, nonetheless, another simple little job, and I want to do uh, one for the other side, and um, another pair for the Roadster as well, a pair for the Roadster, so all good, you know. Keeps you busy, doesn't it? Okay. Thanks a lot then. Bye.